Have you ever been in this situation? You walk into a cafe, you buy your latte, you buy your croissant, and you sit down and you ask yourself, let me connect to the Wi-Fi password and get working on my assignments. And you see this. And you think to yourself, who knew I needed to use math in real life? And we need to obtain the first 10 digits in order to get our Wi-Fi password. And so the first question is, how should we even start? Well, the first observation we have is that plus sign. It looks kind of sus. Perhaps we could split the integral into two separate integrals. And perhaps if we solved each integral, we can obtain our answer and obtain the first 10 digits of that answer and get our Wi-Fi password. Let's start off with the first integral. It looks kind of confusing. But I noticed something interesting about each of the terms. We first noticed that cosine of x over 2 is cosine of negative x over 2. And we also noticed that the square root of 4 minus x squared is actually the same if we replaced x with negative x. For the x cubed term, we can pull out the negative sign. This allows us to rewrite i1 in the following manner. And we see a bunch of negative x's over there. Let's try the substitution u equals to negative of x. Then the derivative of u is going to be negative 1. And du can be thought of as negative of dx. When x equals to negative of 2, u will be 2. And when x is 2, then u will be negative of 2. And we can go ahead and make our following substitutions. And then the negative signs cancel out. And we are left with basically the same expression, except that the limits have been flipped, which tells us that putting a negative sign in front can help us unflip the limits. And yet, what remains is simply the negative of i1. So we have a situation where i1 equals its negative. There's only one real number in which that works i1 must equal to 0. And what that tells us is that the first integral, as long and complicated as it may be, is simply 0. And all that remains is for us to calculate i2. How can we go about integrating i2, you might ask? To integrate i2, we make the careful observation that this square root 4 minus x squared looks a lot like Pythagoras' theorem. In fact, we can draw a right angle triangle as follows. From this right angle triangle, we can make a few really interesting observations. Firstly, the cosine of t is x over 2. We can do a bit of algebra and then differentiate to get dx equals to negative of 2 sine t dt. And secondly, the sine of t is square root of all of that divided by 2. Furthermore, if x is negative 2, then cosine of t is negative 1, which means that t has to be pi. And furthermore, if x equals to 2, then cosine of t must be 1, which means that t must be 0. We can substitute all of these numbers into our integral, and we can clean it up with a little bit of algebra. And to integrate the square of a sine, we resort to a very neat trick in integration, which is the double angle formulae that helps us write sine squared of t in terms of cosine of 2t. We can plug this expression into the integral, and since the antiderivative of cosine is sine, and the antiderivative of 1 is t, we get the following antiderivative. We can plug in t equals to 0, followed by t equals to pi, and then do a bit of subtraction. And since sine of 0 and sine of 2 pi both equal to 0, we can do a bit of algebra and obtain 2 pi. Since 2i2 equals to 2 pi, we have that i2 must equal to pi. And therefore, the integral of our interest must evaluate to pi. But we can't just stop at pi. We need the first 10 digits of pi. And for my younger days in trying to flex it math, the answer is 3.14159265. And since we want the first 10 digits, not the answer rounded to 10 significant figures, our answer will be 3141592653.
and now we can enjoy our Wi-Fi and solve even more calculus problems in the video here.